Sony sucks. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it, but why? Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. If you've seen other videos on this channel, you know that I have a lot to say about the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 5, and everything PlayStation gaming related. <laughs> Some may even go as far as to call me a fanboy, but they start to get confused. There's times in my past episodes where I've let it slip that I'm really not a fan of Sony, and it creates some confusion. And so some people have asked, Anton, why can you rave about the PlayStation 5 being so great and then complain that you hate Sony? My relationship with Sony is, it's kind of a love-hate thing. And I'm gonna explain kind of where that hate comes from and how I can support a product and hate the company. I've been around for a little while now and I've always found a lot of interest in electronics and technology and that sort of thing. It should be no surprise that I used to have the original Sony Walkman. That was groundbreaking and it was awesome and I loved my Walkman. And I loved that I could play music. I loved the yellow styling. It was very sporty. I had my Sony headphones that I wore. I used those all through high school because they were the best. Now I paid a small fortune for those headphones, but I tried so many different brands and they all sucked. And these ones were just perfect. So when CD technology came out and started to be a little bit more affordable, obviously I wanted to go and get my favorite Sony branded CD player. The problem was the price at the time was so expensive. It just wasn't something that I'd be able to do. So I did what anyone would do and I went and bought just kind of a cheaper uh, no name brand or in my case I bought it was like a citizen branded CD player and that worked really well for me. In fact back 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 in the day I actually used to dabble in DJing and I needed two CD players. Instead of having two turntables, I had two CD players. So I had a tiny little Citizen branded CD player and I just had two of those and I was able to modify them so that I could have the lids open while I swapped discs. So it made it very easy to, to swap and then crossfade between the two. So I gained a lot of trust in those cheaper off-branded CD players. When I finally had enough money that I could buy a Sony branded CD player, I did because at the time I still really appreciated my Sony products. But that's when I found out something had changed. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. From the time of the Sony Walkman to the Sony Discman portable CD players, what changed? The quality. My Citizen branded CD player was so much better built. It was so much more rugged. The Sony CD player, actually the plastic felt a little bit cheaper. And that's when I started to wonder, has Sony turned a corner here? You know, in the 80s, they worked to build amazing products that they could sell at price points that were profitable, but they were very high value. In the 90s, Sony started to capitalize on the fact that their products were not very good, but their name had some strength. They began a practice of selling you the name with crap. They, they put crap together and then slapped Sony on it and then charged you a mint. And people paid that and a lot of people probably didn't complain. But I noticed as a youth, my dollars, I didn't have a lot of money. So I had to make sure I was buying something that had value, that could handle being tossed in a backpack and being taken to school and back, could be dropped on the bus, it could be you know, thrown in your car and it could, could survive just life. And that Sony CD player didn't do that. And then when we started to get into the late 90s and I had more money available and I had a nice car which I'll show you guys a picture of it. I loved that car. When it was time to buy a new stereo for the car, of course I went and I bought a Sony. And it was total junk. 
They rated it at, um, I think it was like 80 watts by four. That was the big thing back then. And I was like, okay, so I got 20 watts a channel and the stereo couldn't even drive regular speakers. I had six and a half inch speakers in the door. It did not drive them and sound good. In fact, when you turned it past half volume, the amp started to cut out so bad that the sound reproduction dropped and the only way to get high quality sound out of that stereo was to add external amplifiers. So I had to go and buy more amplifiers to drive the speakers. And that was a problem that I didn't have with any other branded stereo at the time. So they were using cheaper components still and then charging you a fortune for the name. That kind of left a stain for me in my mind because it just, it, this was now the second time that I had been burned and I couldn't stand it. So at the time I started looking for other brands that were kind of up and coming and were looking at ways to increase their value through providing high quality products with a cheaper price point. And that's when I started to realize that this isn't probably exclusively a Sony problem. You see any brand who's trying to do really well or to gain market share tend to build high quality products and they offer them at a little bit lower price point because they want to be aggressive. They want to try their best to gain that market share. And in order to do that, they need people to become what's known as a raving fan customer. If you like Apple products, then you know what being a raving fan customer is all about. Although my love and hate for Apple is a topic for a totally another video, you know at least that at some point, the quality can drop and the name can stay and people will happily pay it. And Sony was definitely capitalizing on that for a very long time. How do I bring the PlayStation into all of this? Well, the only way that I can sleep at night with hating Sony so much and still enjoying my PlayStation is for me to consider them separate brands. I don't think of my PlayStation as a Sony PlayStation, even though Sony makes it. PlayStation is very much a separate company all on its own. It's run by different people. They have different ideologies. They have different mindsets. They have different focuses and any profit that that brand makes obviously trickles up to Sony, but it's not Sony. It's not a Sony Discman. It's not a Sony car stereo. It's not a Sony. I don't even actually know what Sony makes anymore because Sony has been erased from my mind. Whenever I see Sony brands, I just, I don't even think about it because I don't want to be duped again. However, in the PlayStation, the gaming world, they do have to continue trying hard. They have to continue to push that envelope. They have direct competition that is looking to take that market share from them. So they have to try a lot harder. And the PlayStation, if you've seen my other video where I talk about selling the PlayStation at a loss, you know that there's actually a fair amount of value in the PlayStation 5 anyway. So their marketing strategy is totally different than like a Sony Handycam or a Sony whatever else they make. I don't, do they make washers and dryers now? I don't know. I, I, honestly, I don't buy Sony. So back in the day, Sony was pretty good. They had good products at a good price. At some point, their name started to be what was driving the prices up and the quality dropped. And that's my biggest problem. My biggest problem with any company is when they start to just sit back and charge a mint for the name without giving you a lot of substance. I'm all about substance. As you can tell from this video, I'm all about making high quality content and making sure that you guys get the best value for your dollars in watching this content. And I approach what I do the same way that I expect brands to approach my dollars, to give me high value, to give me the best bang for my buck. And Sony just hasn't done it for me. It's really disappointing. I do appreciate the PlayStation 5, but that's where my love of Sony products ends and my hate begins because anything that is not PlayStation, I don't want to hear it. I just don't. It's, it's crap. I don't like Sony's strategies. I don't like their marketing plans. I don't like the garbage that they sell to you at a premium price. And maybe they've gone the other way now. Maybe they've started to give you quality again. I'm not going to get duped into doing that again. I'm not going to get suckered into spending my money to buy something that may or may not be good. I'll just stick with brands 
that I know and trust. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.